Hi guys, in this video and in this series of videos, I want to talk about pivot tables. So we'll start out with just introducing what pivot tables are and their usefulness, and then move on to explore all the intricate details with them and all the powerful features of pivot tables. So be sure to watch part one, which is this, and then watch part two and beyond to kind of get a little more intermediate and advanced topics on pivot tables. Okay, so if you've never seen a pivot table before, you're in the right place. So first off, let's build up the motivation for why you would need such a thing as a pivot table. So a pivot table is really useful if you have a large data set. In, it doesn't even have to be giant, but somewhat large, like the one we're about to describe here. And you want to summarize it. You want to create some kind of report and and or gain some kind of insight that you can't otherwise by just staring at your data. So let's take a look at this data set as our example here. So here we're dealing with used cars. Actually, that's the name of the sheet, as you can see. We have a bunch of features. In fact, it looks like we have eight features. We have the make of the car, the year, the model, the price that it sold for, so a used car, how much it sold for, the mileage when it was sold, the color, the transmission, whether it was automatic or manual, and the date of the sale. Okay? Uh, so eight features. Let's see how many rows we have, how many observations we have. Seems like we have about 150 observations. So this is not a large data set by any stretch, but it is large enough for us to be able to kind of have to do a lot of work to learn about. For example, what do I mean? If I want to get anything more than just staring at this data, I'm going to have to start using some formulas here because just looking at this, I'm not learning anything. For example, if I want to ask the question, which make, so which manufacturer produces the highest uh, used sale price? Well, I can do a little, uh, or maybe on average. So I could do a little average if. So I can start using my if uh, function. So uh, average if, sum if, count if, right? And I can start calculating these fields, these summaries over here on the side. But I would have to do one for each of the makes. And then I maybe I want to analyze the model type and then the color, the transmission. So you see, I'm going to have a lot of work cut out for me. Um, a lot of formulas and at the end of the day there is still very limiting. What a pivot table is going to be able to do is all of that in a very quick way and it's very dynamic. I can change things on the fly. I could play around with it. It's very pliable. So let's see, let's see the power of these things. So first off to create one. Okay, so to create one, we start with our data set. So if we go over to the insert ribbon, you'll see there is a pivot table option. So yours might not be in the exact same spot. Maybe it's shifted over a bit. That's fine. Click on pivot table. And as you can see, we get this little dialog box with a few options. First, we have to choose the data that we want to analyze. We either select it manually, which seems like Excel already kind of suggested something. We'll overwrite that. Sometimes it makes good suggestions, sometimes not. We can use an external source. Uh, then we're asked to choose where you want the pivot table to report. Uh, we're going to typically leave that to the default new sheet, but there's no reason why you can't throw it in some empty blank cells on an existing sheet. And then finally, we have this option of having multiple tables, which we'll leave unchecked for now. Okay, so first thing, let's overwrite Excel suggestion. And here you want to make sure that you grab the entire data set, all the column headers, all the columns, and all the rows. So simply highlight them. You could, in fact, do the highlighting before you click on pivot table. That would work as well. Okay, so we have our data set and we're going to see this pivot table on a new sheet. So we click OK and we get a brand new sheet, as you can see, labeled sheet three for me. And 
now we're ready to build a pivot table. In fact, we're given these instructions here. So we have a pivot table. So default name, pivot table three. We can change that later. It's not really important. Um, what is it telling us? To build a report, choose fields. So what are fields? Fields are those column headings, those variables, those features that we were talking about, like make and model from the pivot table field list. Well, where's the pivot table field list? Well, let's draw a little arrow. Here we go. This is another thing that we're not used to seeing in Excel. We have pivot table fields here. So here you'll, you'll recognize my eight fields from the previous discussion we had in our data set. Okay. If you had more, you might have to scroll up and down here. Eight is nice because you can see it all on one shot. Okay, great. And then we have this section here where we're asked to drag fields between areas below. So we're literally going to grab some of these fields. Like for example, in a moment, I'm going to grab one of these fields and throw it into one of these areas. And I'm going to do that in quite a few different ways. And each of those combinations will produce a live result here in the pivot table view. Okay. Uh, that's what I mean by they're very dynamic and pliable. So we're going to play around with that in a moment. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit more about the general layout here. There's a lot of details which don't really belong in the intro video, which is the one we're in right now, but that we'll get to in a later video. Okay. The other thing you'll notice, you'll get these pivot table tools up here. So this brand new ribbon appears. This ribbon that didn't exist before called pivot table tools. If you've made charts before, you're used to seeing these brand new ribbons appear. For example, when you activate a chart, you get chart tools or something similar sounding to that. Uh, and then when you click off of the chart, you lose those. In a similar way, these pivot table tools are a new ribbon with a whole bunch of options that you can play around with that appear when your pivot table is active like it is right now. So let's just take a look at some of these. So we have the name of our pivot table. So here was pivot table three. We can change the name if we like right here. We have some options. We'll look at these later. Uh, we can kind of drill through different active fields here. We can group. We can insert slicers. This is very powerful feature we'll get to eventually. Uh, we, here we have some data options where we can refresh or change the source. So let's say your data set was updated with a new car. A new car was sold uh, and you want to update your pivot table. You can actually refresh um, or if something was changed in one of the existing cars and this everything here, all the work that you've done doesn't have to be done completely from scr scratch again. It will simply update, which is great. Uh, then we have some action buttons, um, and then we have some calculation fields. We'll get to some of these things. We can make charts based off of our pivot table, so that's called sometimes a pivot chart. Uh, and then there's some recommended pivot tables kind of presets. And then we have this show or not show kind of field lists. That's what we're looking at here, the buttons and field headers. So let's take a look and play around with a bunch of these things. And then there's also, by the way, a design ribbon. So if I actually lose my writing here, you'll see some subtotals you can ask for, grand totals, so now, um, report views, uh, and then some aesthetic things. Okay, But let's get to the basics because the basics are the most important. So that was just a general layout of where things are and, and kind of gives you the breadth of what you can do with pivot tables, but we need to make a basic one. That's the best way to learn. So let's do that. I promised we're going to grab some of these and throw them into these fields and see what happens over here. Okay. So that's the goal I want to achieve uh, in, in this video. In the following videos, we'll go into more details. So uh, remember make was the manufacturer. So let's just grab it. So you see, I, I can literally just grab it drag it down and throw it into one of these areas. So there's no wrong thing to do, let me warn you. So actually you should be quite free when you play around with these. But you'll see there are some typical choices. Like for example, let me throw this in columns. Typically, but this is not a rule, this values area, you typically end up throwing fields that are numbers. Like for example, for us, what would that be? mileage, 
price. Those were, those were numbers where we can calculate things off of. But that doesn't mean that you can't calculate things off of fields that contain uh, categories. Uh, because you can count categories, and that could be useful for you, okay? So for now, let's just keep with trying to put some number field here. So I put columns. Let me take it out so I can throw it in and then take it out. So you see how that works, okay? So don't, don't worry about making mistakes. You can't make a mistake with a pivot table, okay? So let's throw column uh, make which was the manufacturer into columns. And then let's see what happens over here. Boom. I get all the manufacturers in the column section of the pivot table. There's not much else going on yet because I, it, it's not enough to just throw one field into the areas down here. But we're going to build up a little more. So you see they appear in the columns. That's great. So right off the bat, you know that you had Honda, Lexus, Nissan, Subaru, and Toyota. Those were the five makes in our data set. Okay, so if there was anything else, it would have appeared. Okay. Next, let's take the price. That seems like a very interesting field. And throw it, like I said, into values. Typically, you want to throw numbered fields into the values section. Now, if I throw this here, there are some default things that the pivot tables Excel is going to do with this. So what does it do? So automatically, what it does, uh, we could resize these columns if you don't like. Ah, by the way, when I click over here, you see I lose my field list. I lose my ribbon here, and this almost looks like just a regular formatted uh, spreadsheet now, but it's not. How do I get it back? I click on the pivot table, and everything comes back to where it was. So again, click off. It's like a regular sheet. Click on, and I have my field list, my ribbon, and I'm back into my pivot table. It's alive, okay? So don't be worried if you lose it. Okay, so so. If you let me do some basic formatting, just so I can see things a little clearer. Here we go. All right, so what did it do when I took price and put it into the values? It even tells you, because by default, it will do the sum of that num numeric field. So what it did was, it because we had make in the columns, so for example, Honda was the first make, right? It's, it, as you can see, it did alphabetical order. Since Honda was the first make, it found all the Hondas and it summed, summed the price and put that directly under the label Honda. And, that's it. and it's also called that row sum of price. And it did the same thing for all the other manufacturers. So what I have here is already a sum. A, did you see how quick that was? It basically did five sum ifs for me in one shot by literally just me dragging things around. So a lot quicker, a lot more efficient. Now chances are this wasn't exactly what you wanted to see. And here, since we don't really have a very specific goal, uh, we're going to play around with a whole bunch of things. Let's say while we're here, we wanted to get the actual average price. So I can literally click on this drop down and then I could say, value field settings and I can change this you see it's by default it's on sum I can change this to average max min product typically average is a good choice so I can click OK here and you see now instead of sums I have averages let me zoom in a bit actually okay so of course, I don't want to see these many decimal places, but I could do formatting later. But you see what I have here now? Instead of the sum of all the Hondas, I have the average price. And that, to me, is much more useful. I can see now that on average, let's see, none of them really blows any of the others out of the water. It's, they seem pretty close to each other, but it seems like... Can I say Honda has the highest average resale price? Now, of course, we're leaving out a lot of other factors, so we can't read too much into that. We haven't really controlled for the other fields here, so let's not read too much into that yet. In fact, 
we can kind of make this a little more interesting by adding another field. So for example, let's say the color of the car, hmm, transmission, let's pick transmission. Now let's say we also want to consider in this analysis the transmission of the car. So I don't only want to consider the price and the make, but I also want to include transmission. So I can drag transmission down. I have some choices. I could go right under columns. Let's see what happens. It adds the transmission directly under each manufacturer. So you see we have Honda, auto manual, Lexus, auto manual, <coughs> Nissan, auto manual. That's pretty messy looking. I can throw it into filters which creates this filter at the top here which I can then say just show me automatic cars just show me manual cars and it recalculates all these averages based on the transmission that's that could be useful to you or I could throw it into rows and if I throw it into rows it makes a separate row for automatic and manual so here under Honda I have the average automatic used price and the average manual used price and the same for all the other manufacturers and then I have the grand total as well so I can see Honda period regardless of the transmission now if I don't like the way this is oriented I can kind of flip this by taking make here and throwing transmission here do you see that every combination that I'm choosing produces something somewhat interesting so there's no way you can make mistakes play around some things are definitely preferable over others for example that does not look good to me uh, typically we don't want to be scrolling left and right and this is messy typically I want to throw something that's very long onto the rows as opposed to the columns this right here looks very condensed and informative to me I might want to start formatting this and kind of maybe use this for a report for example maybe just some basic formatting right like get rid of the sense right maybe make this uh, so I can see now that Honda's that are automatic sell on average for this much Toyota's that are manual sell on average for this much. I have grand totals for the rows and for the columns. I can get rid of these things. I can tweak this. I can reformat this. I can ask for calculated fields. I can go. I can make this more complex. But I want to leave something to do for the following videos. This one's already gotten long, so this one I'm going to stop right here. This was an introduction to pivot tables and and their power watch part two and beyond where I'm going to make them shorter and sweeter and continue exactly where we are but actually do some more specific more intermediate to advanced type of maneuvers okay hope this was helpful till next time subscribe and watch my other Jaleer Academy videos there's over 400 on my channel they're all available to you for free till next time have a great day